Bitcoin is close to becoming worthless. Now, what's the Bitcoin? Bitcoin's like rat poison. Yeah. Oh. The greatest scam in history. Let's get it. Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you ungovernable misfits. I'm your host, Max. Everybody knows that Bitcoin is useless, worthless, and doomed to fail. But what if everyone's wrong? What if it's the system that is doomed to fail? Join me as I speak to some of the brightest people in the space and slither to the deepest, darkest depths of the Bitcoin rabbit hole. Today on Ungovernable Misfits, we have a very special guest. He opened up the Pleb Miner Month. He wrote Mining for the Streets. And if you care about your privacy or home mining, you will already know who we're talking about. I had the pleasure of talking to Diverter. If you haven't already checked out his work or listened to previous episodes I've recorded with him, you're missing out. And you are in for a real treat today. It was great to catch up with Diverter and we talked about our feelings on some of the changes in Bitcoin and the changes in the culture. I always enjoy getting his perspective. He puts things so eloquently and I think everyone is going to get something out of this. Before we start, I want to thank everyone who's been sending in boosts. It really is incredible to see how this is growing. I think 70 or 80% of our listeners are now listening on podcasting 2.0 apps, which is incredible. And every time we get streams and sats or get sent in a boost or a question, we really do appreciate it. I also want to thank all of the lightning disrespecters. Some of you will not use podcasting 2.0. You will not use lightning, but you are sending in pain in boosts. That is very much appreciated. So thank you to all of you and everyone who's been buying the clothing, buying the artwork and sharing this show with friends and family. It all really helps. Finally, I want to say a huge thank you to Foundation Devices. Foundation Devices help keep this show running and they do things properly. Everything they do is fully open source. The hardware is absolutely beautiful and it is fuckwit resistant. I use this all the time. I have no issues with it. I don't manage to break it like everything else. It is piss easy to use. And that's what you want from your hardware. You don't want to be worrying, getting scared and making mistakes with your life savings. You can use their companion app, Envoy, which makes labeling very simple. You can do backups that are encrypted, so you keep all of your labels, or you can use this with Sparrow. It really is the best hardware out there. And if you are scared to do this by yourself, you can go to any of the guides out there that make it very simple. They have them all on the website as well. And if even that is too much for you, you can pay an extra $99 and you can have Bitcoin Q&A himself hold your hand and walk you through the process. Check them out at foundationdevices.com and use the code UNGOVERNABLE. Diverter, how you doing, mate? Hey, what's up, man? Doing good. How about yourself? Just all the glamorous stuff really here. Clearing out the garage, organizing my tools, mowed the lawn. All that kind of rock star stuff, mate. It's that time of year, and it? It's that time. we got to get yep. s- uh, spring cleaning. Everything's waking back up. Yep. That's it. Spring cleaning in the garden. I've been spring cleaning, labeling all my UTXOs and pestering rabbit <laughs> all morning as well, trying to get myself in order. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can relate. I can relate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's been a while since you were on. I was going to check and listen back to the episode and like be a professional and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't. So 
I'm thinking off yeah. the top of my head. It's been a couple of years, hasn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think um, we did that uh, mining for the streets revisit there a little while back. Yeah, that's uh, it. Whenever the the, the plea miner monthly thing, I think that was the last time. So mm-hmm. that's still going strong, though. I I love to see that you you and uh, you and John doing good things there. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed it so much recording with him. Um, yeah. I just thought, fuck, we've got to keep doing this. It's always good yeah. just chatting to him anyway, and we're always in contact. And people might have noticed on this show, like there's been less and less one-on-one interviews, like mm-hmm. interviews, conversations, right. because there's just seems to me that there's more bullshit and noise and fucking idiots in the space. And my mm. desire to have these conversations with like, whoever's on this podcast circuit at the time Mm -hmm. is just zero. I just can't be bothered. And so instead it's like I do my monthlies with Q and a, he's a terrible guy, but you know, occasionally it's okay to have a conversation and the worst, the same with John, the same. (laughs) Well, I don't know about the worst, but he's up. there, isn't (laughs) He's definitely up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I, I think, uh, I, I think you, you, have hit on something that a lot of people are feeling and maybe don't necessarily know exactly how to word it, but there's a, my opinion anyway, and which is all, all this stuff is, is just one guy's opinion, but there's a general like malaise uh, in the, in the like Bitcoin community as a whole now, as you know, as is, is destined to happen. The bigger that this thing gets, the, the higher that the, you know, fiat exchange rate grows the more people that are just going to continue to come into the space that are not at all aligned with what you would call you know i guess the the original ethos or the more like central themes that have got this thing to where it is now that's a very dangerous thing to me i mean it, it's it's almost like being a uh a, a, a really good basketball team really good football team whatever and you play a certain way all year and you you have success with it. You're your number one team. You get into the final tournament, and you decide in the final tournament, hey, okay, let's now let's let's switch it up and let's you know change our game and start playing this way. So you're abandoning the thing that got you to where you're at because now you feel like you're on a bigger stage. So you need to act differently. And I think that's a that's a that's a mistake. I don't think we need anybody to take this thing anywhere. It's doing just fine on all the way here with the people that have carried it here. And so for those people who feel like, um, you know, we need the Wall Streets, the ETFs for the quote unquote mass adoption, we need to start acting like quote unquote adults, you know, and not have our own opinions online and all these things. I, I think it's all complete and total bullshit. I don't buy into it for a second. And but. I think that as this community has grown larger and larger, that that's that's a side effect. And so it's uh, it's not just you, you know, it's, it's me as well. I know I've spent a lot less time online now, a lot less time on Twitter. I might go in, drop a tweet or two, read some stuff, and, but I can't even, it's almost like I'm just doom scrolling. I, I'm, I'm scrolling mm-hmm. knowing that I'm, I'm going to get mad as I'm scrolling. I know it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it is, yeah, so, so I don't even go. So yeah, I mean, it's, I think that's just, that's an overall thing. And I don't really necessarily think that there's a way to avoid it. So uh, what I think that we have to do is just make sure that it doesn't go away completely. That original sense of what are we doing here? There have to be enough of us voices that are loud enough to at least make sure, hey, we're still here. You know, we we're not gone away. This isn't, you know, boomer coin. It's 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 not just Wall Street coin. It's not just a surveillance coin because, you know, it's very easy to call it all those things. And people do all the time. But, you know, we need to make sure that, no, this 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 uh, this thing is freedom money for a lot of us. Um, And it really is that. And we we're going to continue to treat it like that, regardless how anybody else treats it. So, yeah, I definitely don't think you're alone there. Do you ever feel like almost the other way around that? We're not alone, but we are the minority now in terms of yeah, certainly. who's involved. You, yeah, certainly. that's how it feels to me. It didn't mm-hmm. used to feel like that. It, when I first got involved, I sort of felt like mm-hmm. most people had kind of similar views. And yeah, like I look back at some of my thoughts back then, because sometimes I like write in a diary or write down my thoughts, and sometimes I'm like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Like I used, mm-hmm. to, used to write like, oh, I found people who are – I've got the same kind of morals and ethics as me who like, right. These are people that I feel I can trust. These are people 
you know, like Bitcoin as, as a general mm-hmm. term and kind of like felt like, oh, if they're involved in this, like almost 99% of the time, like I could sit and have a drink with them and like we mm-hmm. get on with most things and it's amazing. And kind of now it's almost flipping the other way. I'm like, actually, most of these cunts I'd want a bottle. 100%. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's been quick because I've not even been around yeah. for that long. Like it's whatever it is, six, seven years, something like that. And it's, it's yeah. like very quickly now. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't know what's happened. I feel I lost. would say, well, you know, I mean, it's again, I, I think it's, I think it's really a direct correlation to, to the fiat exchange rate continuing to rise. I really do. I don't think we really have to look any further than that. You know, 2000, what, what 17, uh, you know, it had the, the, the big run up to 20 Mm -hmm. you know i think that you know that brought a lot of people in but to me what it feels like to me is 2017 we had that big run up to 20 but then you know it went all the way back down to four at one point Mm -hmm. so that last bull run and then bear market i think people that was still sort of like how the original bull runs and markets were because you know same thing is going to happen every time you see a bull run happen exchange rate starts going way up what happens? Everybody piles in. Everybody. They don't care what this thing is, include myself originally. I don't care what this thing is. I don't know what this thing is. I just, I'm trying to make some money. You know, boom, here it is. Now, inevitably, we hit a peak and we start into the bear market and then everybody goes away. A few people stay, right? A few people stay and they realize what this thing is and now they lock in. Um, and that's kind of been, you know, the pattern, I would say. And 2017, I think that that pattern held. A lot of people came, then a lot of people went, and a few good ones stayed. 2020, 2021, I think that pattern kind of broke a little bit because we had, you know, there was definitely like pain in the market. Don't get me wrong. It was definitely pain, but it feels like a lot more people stayed um, that that normally would have left and went to other things They would have went and bought their whatever s p stocks and all that stuff again but now they're 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 still here so it's it feels like the pattern kind of fractured as far as the social aspect of it goes and that's why i think um you know like you said it, it feels socially it feels like it's it's flipped and you know it's, it, privacy stuff is always 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 going to be a niche like a minority thing always but this isn't even just privacy stuff this is a, an entire like fuck you money thing that you know this it, it even extends out from you know just being private with bitcoin into something different you know now we, the e, the etf especially is really going to break things so it, it's difficult it's difficult and it, it's it's hard because you also don't want to be the guy that, you know, like, I, I don't want to be the guy that, you know, I was listening to the Pixies first before they before they got big. And then, <laughs> you know what I mean? And now everybody likes them. I'm like, oh, my God, the Pixies are so like, like whatever. I used to listen. Like, I don't want to be that guy either. You know what I mean? So, like, it's it's a hard mm-hmm. tightrope to walk because, you know, I, I, I my personal opinion is that this thing, this Bitcoin thing, it's not for everyone, but it should be for anyone. And that's a big distinction that I think a lot of people miss. A lot of people think that this Bitcoin thing has to be for everybody. Yeah. And so they're willing to make these trade-offs that we find unacceptable, you know? And so I don't know, it's, it's, it's a difficult time. It really is a difficult time. But again, I think as long as I, I we're definitely, in my opinion, we're, we're not a, a silent majority, <laughs> but I think we need to be a loud minority. Um, instead, and we w- w- make sure that we speak up, make sure that we're it's known that we're in the room, um, and just keep doing what we do. Yeah, it's a difficult balance because, like, I can't be bothered a lot of the time to have the conversations and like yeah. go to war with people because I've got yes. other shit in life, you know, that's more important. And so mm-hmm. it's kind of like, yeah, I want to be loud about things and I want to call people out and I want to have the conversations that matter so that people see, okay, that you don't have to use fucking wallet of Satoshi, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and post post screen shares of you doing that in El Salvador or buying a fucking kebab or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be what Bitcoin is about, but, but it's like, you have to have the conversations, but you don't want to. And it seems like there's just less and less voices that I hear anyway in Bitcoin, like I can't listen to any podcasts anymore. There's there's nothing that I can really tune into. Most people that, and I'm not going to call out names, but most people that I used to respect have sold out in one way or another. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, okay, I need to say some stuff now, 
but the pool of people to bring in is small unless you want to just have confrontations constantly with midwits yeah. who think that you have to have mass adoption and that is the goal of this whole thing, which doesn't really get you anywhere. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult line to cross. And what happens is otherwise you just end up covering the same thing. Yeah. All I would do all the time is just have like you and Samurai and John and Q and whoever else who like kind of all think Right. The same, right? As me, yeah. So it's. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't. So I don't know what the balance is. It, it's it, again. It's very. It's a very fine line. It's difficult. And you know, as you said, you know, these we had these arguments years and years ago, and it's like it seems like with every new person that comes in, it's just a blank slate, and we have to go through the entire process over again. And that's just oh my god, it gets so tiring. So you know, you stop doing it. But you know, the result of that, I think is kind of what we're seeing. I think that's a general feeling. It's not just, you know, you or I. I think it's a general feeling and and it's probably a pretty good reason reason why maybe uh the social pattern kind of broke this last time because people are tired of having the same conversation over and over and over and so they stop having it. I maybe maybe with the assumption that somebody else would step in and start doing it instead mm. and not enough people did. And so, you know, the conversations that needed to happen to um, either get these people to, to see things a certain way or scare them off, <laughs> which is probably what happened in the past, it did happen. And so they're still here. And, you know, the longer that you stay in anything, probably the, the, the more conviction you're going to get in that thing that you're in. And so it just becomes harder and harder and harder to dig people out. So, you know, I guess, and and again, being on in this position is a very difficult one because it's almost like, I feel like if we're right, if we are right about what this thing is and what it can do and the, the power that it possesses to, to, you know, empower individuals, if we're correct in that, then it can't just keep going forward unchecked by you know, governments, whatever, you know, you can't just, they can't just continue to allow people to transact outside of their control privately. It just can't continue to happen. We're seeing things like with Monero now, they're, they're, they're really activating the delisting thing, you know, so these, these, there's a reason for that. I mean, it, it works. Mm. The thing works. People are using it. And so because of that, they're, they're getting rid of it. Get it out of here. It's got to be delisted, delisted, delisted. So now Monero is kind of in a really big test right now. I think it's doing fine. I think it's going to be fine. But I think that's a similar thing with Bitcoin is like if this thing just continues to, to allow people to do, you know, uh, private transactions outside of government control, that there's going to come a point where like the fight actually starts. And I think people, they repeat this mantra of, you know, the, f the first they laugh at you, then they ignore you, then they fight you. Then, like that, that whole thing that people say over and over, it just gets repeated. But mm. I don't think they really take the time to think about what that actually looks like. And I believe if you really look at it and you say, okay, so what does it actually look like, though, if the quote unquote, they fight you stage starts? What does that look like? And if, if your thoughts are anything like mine on a transparent blockchain like Bitcoin, where you can see every transaction that occurs and, you know, if you're then handing over your entire identity to obtain this thing that they can then see every transaction that occurs, it's just a disaster waiting to happen. And so, you know, Bitcoin is different than Monero particularly um, because, and this is an argument that I've made several times, but Bitcoin, unfortunately, it can be like selectively targeted, right? They they get to apply this thing that they call taint or whatever, you know. And it's an ex it's an external application, so it doesn't matter what we really do on chain. They can they can declare anything tainted, and they can declare anything untainted. They'll seize money from Silk Road. That's like according to them, the most tainted of the most tainted, and then they'll auction it off, and suddenly it's magically not tainted anymore, and nothing happened on chain. They didn't do a single coin join. They didn't do a single anything. You know what I mean? It's just it's just magically not tainted anymore. So you can't beat that. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, there's no beating that. So because you can do that with Bitcoin, you can't really do that with Monero. They can't pick and choose transactions or, or you know, TXOs in Monero. They can't say, oh, that's tainted. Oh, that was used here. That was used. Can't do it. So what happens? Well, they just blanket ban list the whole thing. We'll just get it all out of here then. You can't use it at all. With Bitcoin, it's different. So in my mind, the very clear path for, you know, sort of like the, the fight new stage would be that you don't ban the thing, 
You're not going to ban the thing that sailors, uh, you know, the sailor Bitcoin, as I would call it. You're not going to ban that because why would you? It's a it's a tax revenue. There's no way you're going to just get rid of this tax. Ref- just, they're just feed, they're giving it to you. So, but you can say, okay, if you use this thing or acquire this thing outside of these approved regulated exchanges, Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, whatever, like these are the exchanges that are that are legal. You can buy it here. You can, hell, you can even sell it here. You can send it to each other, right? No problem. You can still send it, but it's just exchange to exchange. Anything outside of that, we'll call that unhosted. And then we'll say that these unhosted uh, transactions and acquisitions and all that, those are illegal. And I think the path is clear. They've already started on it, especially in, in uh, the EU, seems like. Mm-hmm. They're, they're already, they've already started on the path. Uh, the fat you know, um, recommendations and all this stuff, like it's, to me, it's just, it's plain as day. So again, if we're right, then the tools that we talk about and the things that we talk about are going to become so necessary for any people that actually want to use this thing, you know, and actually like use Bitcoin as money, then they have no choice but to come around. There, there's no choice. Oh, yeah. You know, and then the other group, they don't want to use the Bitcoin as money. Like they legitimately don't. They do not care if you can transact at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't mm-hmm. care if you could ever send it. That's just, it's, that's not what it is. So it's, it's extremely difficult situation, especially socially. It's kind of why, I, you know, like I said, I've, I've kind of backed out of socials. I'm not on them anymore. I'm just kind of doing my thing and, and doing, you know, I, I've started going to meetups. Um, this year. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep like energy mm-hmm. just in a different way now. I think it's a, it's a more productive way. In-person conversations is much better than like the screeching on Twitter. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. But it's certainly for your like mental health, <laughs> but it's like, uh, you know, certainly like for me as a podcast, it's like, uh, you know, I have to try and reach new people. Mm-hmm. I don't have to reach new people, but I want to reach new people. Sure. And I want those new people to come in and be like, oh, what's this other thing? What's this ungovernable misfits? Like, mm-hmm. why are they not saying the same things as I see everywhere else on Twitter? Like, <laughs> right. why are they saying that it's important to actually... <sighs> try at least and keep some privacy and and keep the government out of your business and and Mm -hmm. why are they saying these things so then you have to cast your net out and you have to slowly explain exactly how you laid out really beautifully there it's like i don't think people understand the opponent they're up against and like i mean none of us do really but you know to think that they can't crush us is really fucking stupid you have to be very sophisticated to do things properly. And I kind of think that, you know, they're certainly not stupid. They're going to know that people are using this in the way that you or I would want to use it. But I just think they're probably looking at it and going, hmm, it's such a small percentage of people who actually know how to use this in the correct way that we don't really currently see it as a threat. Mm -hmm. And even some of them are going to slip up. Like, you know, even people, if you said, okay, how many people who are Bitcoiners in inverted commas, like how many of those people do something simple? How how many of them run a node? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Well, how many of those when they've actually downloaded the blockchain just do that straight over ClearNet and Mm -hmm. now we have their IP address? Mm -hmm. Probably quite a lot. Yeah. Like probably a pretty big percentage of those people they have the data on. Yeah. Okay. And now how many of those people are actually using any of the tools to make it more difficult for us to track what they're doing very few Mm -hmm. and how many using custodial wallets and everything else so you know they can quickly build up a picture of like okay you bought from this exchange then you sent it to this wallet then you sent it over here we can see that you still have control over it we can see your ip address we know where you live and if you become a problem we're just going to come knock it. Yeah. Like it's it's not hard. It, you know, it's it's really not difficult. So that's my guess is it's not like oh they they don't have the capability no. of coming and just taking your shit. Like it's more just going yeah it's, it's fucking it's, it's such a small number of people and at the moment the optics wouldn't be good if we go and kick people's door down. Yeah. So we'll just keep a list and we'll just wait and if it becomes a problem we'll we'll crush them. 100%. That's how I see it. 100%. And and you know that's that should be obvious 
to anybody that really, really sits and thinks about this thing for a second. And it's, again, arguments I've made several times, but the same thing with, I think, in my opinion, like, like Monero, where, you know, I'm of the opinion that it, it's staying this basically the size that it is, if that makes sense, like socially, the people that are using it is, is the thing that allows it to continue to, to run. I truly believe that. And, you know, with Bitcoin, it's not so much like the the actual network. It's the actual network of Bitcoin. It's so large. There's so much the action and, act, and like a, a brute force attack um, is, is probably not going to work. It, it could, but it's probably not going to work against Bitcoin. But this We've left the uh, we've left the back door wide open, and not only is the back door wide open, there's a big, like, bright, glowing sign telling them, "Yo, hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can come in right here. <laughs> you can come in right here if you want." So, you know, and when it comes to things like fighting and an adversary, like an actual nation state, everything changes. Everything changes, and I really, really, really don't think people grasp it. Even I sometimes gloss over things. You know, don't I'm not perfect by any means i hand wave off stuff from time to time that um you know is probably shouldn't be but i do it um i'm human and you know we make we make certain assumptions that i think whenever you go against a nation state actor especially one like the united states that currently holds the world reserve currency status and whose citizens overwhelmingly i would say want to keep it that way like they 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 want the United States dollar to be the world reserve currency. They don't want this new thing to displace it, you know, and for the United States to lose its like bully position in the world stage. There's no way. There's no way. So when it comes to, to having like the United States as your adversary, the base assumption that I think a lot of people make is that okay, here are the rules. Now, if both pl- if both sides play by the rules, then this is how it plays out. They own the rule book. Yep. They own the rule book. They own the pens that write the rules. They own the hands that grab the the pens that write the rules. Like they, it's their rule book. Mm. So if you think that. You've got these certain things that you're going to do because they can't do this based because of, you know, whatever the Fourth Amendment. Well, FISA would like to have a word. The, the FISA 702 thing would like to have a word about the Fourth Amendment real quick. You know, they just, they just uh, uh, you know, passed this little thing the other day and, and refused the amendments or whatever to keep it from being basically warrantless searches on all your electronic communications and and that forces providers to provide this electric to uh, this information to uh, governments and I mean it's if you go in and look at the thing it's it's atrocious like yeah. you know the it just obliterates the Fourth Amendment essentially in a digital in a digital age so what are you talking about these these rules are irrelevant and that's America yeah and that's America's one of the best uh, yeah, absolutely know, and, and that's top, top there, dog so. <laughs> top it's, dog I mean you know look at um Roman Sterling off if it, it, I don't know if you mm-hmm. have, have paid any attention well yeah you guys talked about it the other day um but mm-hmm. you know I had had the chance we went down to Dallas and did the um did the comp the Finney forum down there um and oh yeah how was that yeah it was it was great it was great I had one little hiccup but it, it was it was great I had a, yeah. a, a I, I will go to my grave this dude was a fed uh, uh that was just like on me I had to kind of shake him a little bit but other than that it, it was it was really cool oh really yeah like it was bad but other than that, conference was great. Everybody, the speakers were, you know, it, it actually went better than what I thought it would, if I'm being honest. Because, you know, it used, that used to be guns and Bitcoin. That's uh, what used to be the conference. Yes. And so. Ragnar. Yes, Ragnar. Yeah. Yeah. And the guns and Bitcoin was awesome because everybody loved the 3D mm-hmm. printed guns, right? And so mm-hmm. he had to kind of separate away from the 3D printed gun crowd for reasons. So now I felt like losing that um, would probably make a big, big dent in that conference. And I really didn't think it was going to be that good, to be quite honest with you. But I went because I like Ragnar. I want to I want to always support him and help him out. He's a good guy. But it was it went very well. It went very well, much better than what I thought. Um, the Monero that he, he put Monero in place of the 3D printed guns. It went well. It's, you know, only slightly annoying. <laughs> but uh you know, it, it went really well so tor who was roaming roman's uh lawyer tor and mike yes they were both there and they both spoke got to spend a little time with them after the conference just chopping it up you know got, got a bite to eat and all that stuff and i felt so much better about 
Romans essentially fate being in you know kind of in these guys' hands because they're they're super super good guys like mm-hmm. normal dudes. You know what I mean, guys. You can you can legitimately go grab a bite to eat with, sit down, grab a beer, just chop it up, talk about whatever. Good good dudes, and they're going in and they're fighting the fight that has to be fought, unfortunately. And if you look at that case, it is so tragic the the way that they just the jury, you know, God bless them. It's just normies. They're just normies, man. They're just mm. people. They, they, you know what I mean? This is normal people. Yeah, yeah. They have no understanding of Bitcoin, um, of, you know, blockchain forensics. They are still, for lack of a better term, they're still in the matrix. They still think that, you know, the government's mm. here to help. Why would they lie? Like, it's those people, you know what I mean? So mm. to try it and put, to put these blockchain forensics up, um, and I won't go tons into the case because you guys have already covered it and all that stuff but to try to get these just like regular people who like probably have honestly never even thought about the government maybe being an adversary you know as mm-hmm. the government's here to help they are that's what they do that's their job they're obviously they're going to tell the truth so you know the presumption of innocence is just not reality um, when it comes right down to it and they convicted this guy using if you if you just look for a for a moment at it like there is Forget reasonable doubt. Like <laughs> I would argue, hell, you're way past reasonable doubt, or you should be. It's so bad the forensics, um, the blockchain forensics on this that it like it's almost sickening. Um, I feel really, really bad for this dude because I genuinely think he had nothing to do with running uh, the Bitcoin fog site. Like I genuinely think that. And you know, so the point of all that is that when they, when the government is your adversary. They get to write the rules. They get to interpret the rules however they want to, because mm-hmm. that's a big part of it is interpretation of what this rule actually means. And they get to change everything like on a dime. I mean, they could they can flip it overnight. So mm-hmm. and they've got this mass of people behind them that are normies that, you know, they I guarantee if you went up to one of them and started talking to them about privacy, their response within the first 15 seconds would be, I'm not doing anything illegal. I don't have anything to hide. Guarantee mm-hmm. you're going to hear that. So that's who you're fighting. It's not only the government that you're fighting, because as you mentioned, when the government start to do things that the people that the governed don't like, if they do it enough that they push you too far, that's that's no bueno, right? That's no good. We don't, don't, we don't want to do that. So they have to do it in such a way that it doesn't upset the general populace. I, I'm telling you right now, the general populace is not going to be upset as soon as the government comes out and lays out a plan to go after these private super hackers that you know do all this different stuff with Bitcoin. They're not using it like regular people. They're they're not using it like like your buddy Mike. Uh, you know, that you see on TV all the time talking about just holding this thing and it's digital energy and mm. it's cyber hornets. They're not doing that. <laughs> they, they, these guys are like super hackers. Let me show you what they do. And then they'll put up a whirlpool transaction and everybody's like, fucking this guy's guilty. Like it's, mm. it's, it's so easy to sell that narrative. So I, I just, I genuinely believe people don't get it. And, um, I think it's going to cost a whole lot. I just hope that it doesn't cost everything, I guess. Well, we saw it in COVID times. Like you saw yeah. normal people yeah. in the UK, just like normal people who were completely okay with saying things like, oh, well, if you haven't had a jab, then you shouldn't have treatment in a hospital. Dude. Like <laughs> shit like that. Like, yeah, but this guy's dying of cancer. Well, you should have a jab then. You're yeah. like, whoa, fuck oh, me. Okay. God. You went, you, you very quickly turned, like went along with this. So I've got absolutely no faith in the average man around me. Like they'll turn into zombies in seconds and they'll come yeah. and eat you. It's, it's, you can't put your trust in them. And it's kind of like governments are inefficient in many ways. And people do sort of lean into that and go, oh, government's so inefficient. You know, I've had a pothole on my road for the last three years that hasn't been fixed. It's like, yeah, okay, wait till you owe them tax. Oh, yeah. See how inefficient they are then. All things change. <laughs> you know, wait till you are on the wrong side of them because they are very, very efficient. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they can afford not to be too. Like that, that's the, mm-hmm. the issue is as long as we're living very, very plainly in a fiat world, 
they are the fiat masters. So like they can afford to be all the inefficient they want. They can be as dumb as they want because they can do this over and over and over and over and just print more money and do it again, print more money and do it again. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like they're, you know, they have to be efficient. No otherwise. Cost. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's like, they, they just keep printing. Oh, well print another six tree and go after them again. It's like, mm. It's a whole different world. You know, there's levels yeah. to everything. You know what I mean? There's levels to everything. And, and that's within Bitcoin, within society as a whole, as far as the people that you would say, you know, I get like get it or understand what's happening or see like the reality of what things are. And there's always going to be, you know, the, the levels to it. But in in Bitcoin, my I guess my early mistake is to go back to what we we're talking about earlier. Like I genuinely thought when I came in that anybody that was in this Bitcoin stuff or, or you know into Bitcoin or whatever, I genuinely believed that they were smarter than like your at the average normie or whatever. You know what I mean? I, I genuinely believed that there was an intelligence separator. Um, that like, okay, well, these people are smart enough that they get it. Like that, then obviously that puts them on a certain level. And I think that assumption has been broken for quite a while now. That may have been a decent assumption back, back in the day, but mm. that assumption has been broken. And, you know, it comes with, that comes with a lot of issues, um, that we have to navigate. So it's a tough time. Yeah. Um, where's well, part of the reason, like in my last couple of episodes, I've made little, uh, intros and kind of subtly called out the McCormacks and people of this world who this merry-go-round of like with the Tor Eklund case in particular it's like um okay there's a thing that's happening which is hitting the news let's get the lawyers on mm -hmm. let's get them on and have a conversation and go oh it's sad oh yeah that's sad this would get some listens oh mm -hmm. cry a fucking river then let's talk about how terrible it is that there's chain surveillance companies who are preying on people and putting people behind bars let's talk about how sad that is and how bad that is mm -hmm. then let's put our hands out and take money from companies who fund <laughs> said chain surveillance companies yeah and round and round we go yeah. oh well it doesn't matter we can fund them and then at least there'll be someone else who's arrested and is going to potentially spend the rest of their life behind bars and mm -hmm. they're probably innocent um but you know that's cool because then it's another show and more listens and yeah. it's not just mccormack it's others as well and this is the thing it's like when you're talking about an intelligence test it's like are you fucking idiots who are listening <laughs> to these shows not smart enough to see that merry-go-round are you not smart enough to see how fucking disgusting and stupid this is and if you're not which you're not because enough people listen then you're all gonna get wrecked and it makes me wonder like how much of this is potentially social engineering i was having this conversation oh, yeah. with someone the other day i was like if i was a government i wouldn't go and knock people's doors down for exactly what we said it's bad optics i would just insert some people in cause some stupid drama i'd probably put someone like sailor in and say Go and buy a shitload of Bitcoin on our behalf. We own you. We own it. Now go and spread some narratives that are fucking retarded. Let everyone worship you. Put some other people in. Cause some rifts. Cause some rows. And create a space where you used to have people who were thinking and they had an adversarial mindset and they cared about freedom and they cared about sovereignty and they cared about all the things that the groups that we're involved in care about. And let's just push that off course. Yeah. And that's what it feels like to me. I, I don't think it's like the bar's lower and people are getting more stupid. I actually think that there's like a malicious, a bit like people talk about, oh, is, uh, is China and Russia changing the way that Americans think or the Western world thinks so that they... Um, you know, they can affect the way that society works to slowly bring them down. Yeah. Well, maybe. But yeah. if that's happening, then why wouldn't it be happening in the Bitcoin world? I would think it would happen quicker and easier. And that's how it feels. It doesn't feel, I guess that's the way to describe it, is like it doesn't feel organic. It used to feel organic and now it doesn't. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely see that. Um, definitely can see that. And, you know, it's to be as fair as possible. Like It, it is so easy to see all this thing all these things in hindsight when you first come into a thing or you know i i'll I speak for myself here whenever i first like come into a thing or, or i'm first learning about something i will readily admit like i don't go into 
the new thing that I'm learning, generally speaking, with like an adversarial mindset. I don't. I generally speaking, when I'm going, you know, into a new place, a new job, a new what, whatever website that I've heard, whatever, a new thing that I that I like that I'm interested in. Like I'm, I, I generally don't go in immediately uh, looking for, you know, the the subversive uh, way in. I don't immediately look for, okay, what happens if this is if it's, you know, an adversary. Like that's just not how I do. It. I just assume things are right, and then once you're in, then that's when you start like looking looking at, at your surroundings. I think hmm. I think people, um, especially with Bitcoin, because it's so like big. Like the the concept, this whole thing is so big. Um, like it's very difficult to to like you know master Bitcoin as it were, because there's so many parts of it. There's so much you know, n- not even getting into the social, but like the game theory, like the whole thing is just massive. It's such a mindfuck that it's very easy to come into it and just spend years in La La Land, just amazed. That this thing even works. Look at this. Nobody's even running it. Like, oh, it, it just it just keeps going, and then it cuts in half, and then oh my, this is just amazing. Oh, it's better. You know what I mean? And you can spend mm-hmm. years like that. Like, oh my god, and just this like this this orange glow around you because you found this mm-hmm. thing that's so interesting and it's so cool and it's so neat. And before you know it, you've spent years in this thing, and you've given up all your information to your adversary. You've done all this stuff that you know can now it's permanent. It's the blockchain's there. It's not going away and it's and they can go back you know look at uh roman you know this is what 2011 they went back to 2011 transactions um 2011 2013 i think you know we're talking over a decade ago and somebody comes in and now and tries to ask you about a transaction that you made a decade ago what are you supposed to tell them i don't fucking know um you know you st- i don't still have that wallet i've, <laughs> I've made 17 <laughs> wallets since then what are you talking about you know and it's like well no here right here it is we got you so to be as fair as possible, like I, I, I get it to to a degree. I get it. I understand how you could come in and not see it. I understand how you could come in and be taken in by a McCormack, um, you know, by that crowd. Like I, I, I truly do understand how that happens. I don't have a problem with that. So the point then is how do we get this other message even in front of those people? Because even on like Bitcoin Twitter, in, in certain, it, it's really weird. It's a really weird thing. Like in certain, like n- very niche parts of Bitcoin Twitter, it's like I'll meet somebody and they'll be like, oh my God, it's Diverter. Oh my God, that's you. You know what mm. I mean? Like, oh my God. And then like the entire rest of Bitcoin Twitter is like, who the fuck is this guy? You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> so it, it's like Bitcoin, even, even just Bitcoin Twitter, not even the whole thing as a whole, just that little niche aspect is so divided. And compartmentalized, so you know, it really, truly is an echo chain, and that's what they want. That's what the algorithm continues to feed you more stuff like that. So it becomes harder and harder to get this other message, even in front of those people that have been taken in, and now they've spent years believing this thing and believing this thing works this way, and this is how it's supposed to be, and this is totally fine. That's just chain surveillance because they're going after bad guys and all this stuff, and it's, it becomes harder and harder to break out of it. So, yeah, you know what I mean? I get it. I, I really do. I just, I don't know what the solution is, really. Well, I think it's like, what I'm trying to do is just consistent messaging. Yeah. It's like yeah. being very consistent on Bitcoin isn't actually complicated for the end user. Like, it's mm-hmm. fucking complicated. It's mm-hmm. amazing what it does and how it's built. And yeah, you could lose the rest of your life just studying it and all the rest of it. But actually, as a user, if you're like, No, I get it. I kind of, I want to use this thing. It's not that hard. And so my messaging is like, okay, choose one wallet for your phone and one wallet for your laptop. And I'm pretty consistent on that. It's like, use Samurai. Very, very good. Use Sparrow. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Once you've done that, you can think about setting up a node and, you know, that's not the hardest thing. Here's how to do it. Yeah. Make sure that you don't leak your IP when you're doing it. And outside of that, and if you want to use a hardware, I know loads of people are like, you don't need hardware. I still like to use it. But, Mm -hmm. you know, depending on if you've got your life savings in it or whether it's a few hundred dollars, that also depends. But like use open source stuff. And it's not really that fucking difficult. Like it's, if you want to get set up, you can do it in a weekend. Even me, (laughs) I can do it in a weekend. I can be like, okay, I'll set these things up. And then like simple stuff, like 
worry about your labeling. Worry about labeling your UTXOs and having a, a backup so that you know that you're not shooting yourself in the foot when you don't need to. Just simple stuff like that. And what frustrates me is people would rather listen to the 500th episode of, like you said, like uh, Cyber Hornet fucking yeah. energy shit yeah. and we're going to 10 million because of this etf inflow stat mm-hmm. that we've got and blah blah and it's like they get the lube out and have a wank about how excited they are <laughs> and how fucking smart they are and how they're going to be rich it's like okay could you just at least spend one fucking weekend not doing that and just <laughs> once just put your shit in order and that's kind of the message i'm trying to get out it's very frustrating yeah it's very frustrating i i, I will say like as you were talking about earlier the difference between talking to people online and talking to people you know in real life i, I will say um you know i've done a few conferences now and now this year i've like i said i've started making like a conscious effort i'm actually going to start going to meetups that are close ish around me so i can you know i want to build my in real life network as you know strong as what i feel like my online network is because my online network i'll put up against anybody's online network like i am so so secure in my online like Mm. community that like i'll put it up against literally anybody i don't these are people that I legitimately call friends. And I, I mm. promise you, I don't throw that word around lightly. Like these are legitimately my friends. And some of them I've never met. Don't know their name. I don't know what mm-hmm. the hell they look like. Nothing about them. Legitimate friend. So I'm good there. Like I feel good about that. But, you know, when it comes down to like in real life, I don't talk about this stuff with hardly anybody. You know, you do the little family thing, or I don't know how most people is with mine is, you know, the the whole little family thing, you know, you get together on Thanksgiving, hey, you know, you feel like the guy coming down from the attic, you know what I mean? Oh, tell us about your (laughs) Bitcoin. You know, tell us about your Bitcoins. Are you still doing the Bitcoins thing? And it's like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) So, like, I want to try to have some people that, you know, I I know in life, and not only that, but, you know, um, I finally, this year, was able to I don't know if I, if you know this or not, but I was able this year to abandon my entire career that I've worked my ass off to build <laughs> and decide instead see this. Uh, to yeah to go full time on uh, on Bitcoin. So I'm paid in Bitcoin now fully. Like I I'm fully fully living off Bitcoin, nothing else. So it's like okay, now I actually need some people like in my life that I could say, hey, I need to pay rent. I need to do you know, whatever. Like hey, you want to buy some Bitcoin? So you know, it's a it's a mutual thing, you know. So anyway, all that to say, so every time that I've done these in person things, whether it's a conference, uh, a meetup, whatever, people are genuinely engaged like genuinely engaged when you start talking about this stuff. And, you know, I think a lot of the reason is because they've probably never heard it before, probably never even thought about it. I walked into a meetup and started talking about Samurai Wallet. One person there had ever even heard about Samurai Wallet. All right, it did, I didn't start talking about Samurai. I actually started talking about Taint as a, as a concept and the way Taint works. Mm. Had no idea what I was talking about. All right. One guy that knew about this. And one guy that had even heard these these things at all, everybody else, and there was like 15 other people there at this meetup, everybody else was glued to glued to their seat. Mm -hmm. And it was like they were they were in it. So it's not that like the message doesn't resonate with people or it's not interesting. It's 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 none of those things like we have, for lack of a better term, we've got a good product that we're selling you know, as, as much as like privacy and the whole freedom thing, like it's, it's a great product to sell, but the message itself just generally is less appealing, um, than what other people are doing. So that's the fight. Um, and in real life, every time I've talked to people they're they're all in about it, they genuinely like follow up on stuff. They want to know about it. They're, they're, they're into it. So you know, it's just to me doing things like you're doing, because there's very few of these shows, but doing shows like you do where you consistently hammer out the same message, you you, you get it out. Eventually, this lands in those people's laps eventually. And it's a it's a trickle. You know, I think that's the difference in the two like communities, the the, you know, number go up community, it gets flooded. It's a flood when the number starts to go up. But the privacy and freedom aspect stuff, it's always going to be a trickle. And that's, you know, it's it's frustrating to deal with. Are you now that you're earning in Bitcoin? Are you in our mesh to Del group? Uh, I don't on Telegram. I don't know if I am or not. I don't think so, actually. Uh, I'm going to send you an invite. Yeah, um, send me, send me because one. that sounds like because so many people in there 
it's all just like a group of people who are either regenerative agriculture or they're selling products or um, they'll exchange in there. So for people who are actually living on Bitcoin mm -hmm. and actually using it, it's really good. You know, you want to buy lamb or beef or you want to buy honey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy maple syrup, you want to, whatever it is, there's someone in there and it's more, more centered in America, but we've got some really good people in there. I'll, oh, yeah. uh, nice. I'll for sure. Send you a link. For sure. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it now is like, you know, I spent, I've gone on quite a little journey in Bitcoin yeah, as, as we all do, you know, I came in, bought this thing on Coinbase. I had no idea what it, I thought it was just like a stock or something. That's absolutely zero understanding. You know, it's 2016, no idea what this shit is. Um, but it's like 600, $700 when I started buying it and then it starts going up. You know what I mean? Things like 12, 1300 bucks for sale. Like I'm a genius. You know what I mean? It doubled my money. And then I watched it run all the way up, realized I was missing something. And that's, that's when I started digging in. And then I went through, you know, my journey of, okay, I'm learning this stuff. Now I want other people to learn this stuff. So I started writing blogs, started doing this thing. Then I started getting to know people. Then I ended up getting lucky enough to have uh, you know, being offered a job working in Bitcoin. And now I feel like my next like leg of my journey um, is like the in real life thing. So I want to get, you know what I mean? A, a, a network in like meat space of people that I could talk with that I can, you know, count on when you need something like it's, it's, I've got family, don't get me wrong, but it's a different, there's a difference in family and friends. And yeah. it's, it's, you know, once you've kind of like woken up to all this bullshit that's going on, it makes it for me anyway, it makes it more difficult to, to, to like make friends and, and, you know, socialize with people outside, you know, just in general. Um, I found that to be the case for myself anyway, because, you know, I've got this whole thing going on in my mind, you know what I mean? And now I'm seeing like all these other angles and I'm looking at all this different shit and everything's being processed. And I look over at them and they're just like, like they're, you know, what's the guy say? Like they're in an Enya video, you know what I mean? Just walking around, la -di -da -di -da. <laughs> and, it's like, and it's like, you know, this was smack of wake the fuck up. What's wrong with you? So, you know, yeah, I, I think that's where I'm at in my next leg of my journey. So. We'll see how it takes me. Yeah, uh, I think we're in a similar place. It's hard to make friends with people who are. It's like that meme standing by the barbecue. It's like, uh, "Hey, did you catch the game last night?" <laughs> yes. Like whatever you say about like crazy <laughs> shit, and that's all they have to say. Like, "Fuck this! I, this is not the conversation I can have." Uh, but um, yeah, there's loads of. I mean, there's loads of people who are who are thinking in the same way as we are, and that's kind of what the mesh Dada is about: is bringing these people together. Uh, a mesh network of people who can help each other out in uh, all different ways so that's been growing quite nicely and it's been good as well you've been putting some writing out i was reading through your op return one the other day which we put on ungovernable misfits um so it's good just seeing some real uh important articles going out because i don't think i don't know like the, the three main ones you know we we're talking earlier about what's the topics that are being discussed on Bitcoin Twitter and a lot mm -hmm. of the like stupid stuff that makes you just be like, oh fuck, I just want to turn this thing off. Yeah, yeah. Like some of the ones for me is at the moment, all this mining censorship and people like <laughs> getting excited about ocean oh, is, is pissing me off. It's just like, shut the fuck up. And then this, uh, you know, oh, mass adoption, but we can only have one UTXO per person. And that's mm. a problem. It's like, do you know how far mm. away we are from this shit like do you have mm. any idea how far away like all these all these little things Dude. are <laughs> conversations that i just don't think like people are going into enough depth so when you write something like your article on you know the op return stuff it's like okay cool this is a way that someone can can break it down and be like okay i'm not just listening and going on ocean because fucking jack dorsey is involved and i think he's cool i actually now know what i'm talking about and maybe i don't know maybe censorship isn't great you know yeah 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 it's and you know you we're talking earlier about this like social engineering aspect and i you know i couldn't agree more and it's it really to me like shows through in those topics in particular because man i, I really don't think people understand the pandora's box that has been opened with this like 
sure it's it, like a lot of this stuff could have always been done. Like it's there's, but that's the case with lots of stuff throughout time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you could have always, we could have invented the wheel forever. You know what I mean? Just nobody did it. Well, yeah, exactly. Like you could have been doing all this stuff with mining, you know, and censorship and, and all this stuff like for a long time, but like nobody did it. So it wasn't being thought about, talked about anything. And now, you know, with this implementation and what ocean is doing it's opened a box that can't be closed now and you know it's it's going to serve to just further fracture um mempools everywhere so you know i don't know if fee estimation in your wallet I, you know I, I don't know what wallets people are using but i i promise you like there's a very very good chance that whatever wallet you're using um the fee estimation in it is absolute dog shit. And that's because it's probably, you know, based off pulling from like Bitcoin D and stuff like it's that now we've got these transactions and actual public facing services where people can purposefully just bypass that mempool completely and go what straight you, to the mine. Are you using next block for your fee estimation now? Uh, yes, yes. And, you know, that's so Samurai is as per uh, usual like as far as i'm concerned anyway uh, uh, just ahead of everybody else on on this stuff like they they think about mm-hmm. things that their users have issues with and they like actually act on it before um because a lot they of others actually use bitcoin yeah and i think i think that's a big part of it i really do because like a, a lot of people don't even understand that it's an issue or don't even care about it like nobody's nobody's talking about fee estimation or wasn't anyway but you know tra- samurai was already doing it a little differently than everybody else it, it was you know wouldn't uh, it would not allow you to pay uh, you know a high, too high of a fee like there's there was always a ceiling um, in, in Samurai, even using like Bitcoin D or a rolling average or whatever, there was always still a ceiling where it, it just wouldn't let you pay too high. And, you know, for people that have been using it for a while, seen some fee spikes, like a lot of these fee spikes are very avoidable. It's just because people are using wallets that are absolute dog shit with their fee estimation. And because of that, then you start getting that's you, you get these fee spikes. I mean, that's not the entire yeah. reason, but it can, it's a big contributing factor. So, you know, yeah, Samurai and then uh, NextBlock.is. You know, it's it's the it's actually looking at the current transactions in the current mempool, like w- what's actually in the mempool now of your node, and it's looking at those and then giving you a fee estimate and and a percentage of what is the chance that you use this fee. What's the chance that you'll be, get into the next block? So like next block is a 99% chance that you'll get in. And then like uh, you've got like a medium or a normal, which is like a 50% chance you'll get in. And then you've got a low, which is like a 10% chance you'll get in. But you know, a lot of people don't understand how like the fee estimation is working. What's what's your wallet, if you're not using, you know, like something with like next block is what your wallet's doing is looking at already confirmed blocks. And then it's making a fee estimation based off of blocks that have already been confirmed, not based off of what transactions are actively in the mempool. So, you know, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things that, like, again, people don't really, it doesn't really register and you know, you don't think ahead, but just that little thing is, it's a big, big deal. It's a weird one as well. Like I've tried to have the conversation with a few people who are on the side of censorship is good because ordinals are not good. Yeah, yeah. And I've never really like got to the bottom of where what they're thinking because I've always said to people like, okay, let's say that it's you think it's a massive issue that the fees are going up. Do you not think it's an issue if the fees don't go up in the future for miners? And they're like, oh yeah, well, that would be an issue. It's like, so, okay, so it's not really an issue that the fees are going up necessarily. Your issue is that the cost for you to send a transaction, if you are sending a transaction, could be higher, even though it's not really that high still, but it could be higher. And they're like, yeah, pretty much. I'm like, okay, well, could you not run a miner to offset that cost? Have you thought about that? Like, have you thought about just maybe setting your fee lower and just waiting? I never pay high fees. I'm generally in single digits, even when the fees are running. Like, how often do you need to send one urgently? And it seems like they don't really have answers for it. I think what is happening is they are just following along with what sounds cool. And the fact that something is uh, not technically Bitcoin or it's like a transaction that they don't see as Bitcoin, then it isn't 
right and they almost see it as like a shit coin and then they want to attack it because that's the cool thing to do do you know what i mean like it's part of Uh, like the in crowd thing to do so i just don't think people are thinking through like a what it means or where it can go or b like there's ways around it like when the fees are high i'm I'm looking and i'm going oh i'm running some miners okay i'm getting some more fees very nice (laughs) like so what so i've got it so now i've got to send a transaction and if i really desperately want it to go through well okay then it just offsets against what I'm earning. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> God, that's a it's a hedge. You got the the transaction fee hedge. Yeah. Uh, my um, I think my biggest um issue, or at least one of the biggest issues I have with the whole, I'll just call it the ordinals thing. Um, but everything that it encompasses is what really really gets to me is that it has been made into a moral issue. It is now a morality issue. Um, for so many people oh, it's fucking annoying and that really 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 gets to me like this is not uh, uh, some like morality test of you know well if you're uh, using bitcoin in a moral way which is to say what what does that mean exactly that i can only send a, a, a one input two output transaction because that's the thing that I've, i'm getting more recently is i don't see how it's exact quote i think or really close to exact quote i don't see how it can be controversial to say that everybody should use the blockchain in the most efficient way possible well i do i see how that can be controversial because if you follow that logic to its natural conclusion then what you're left with is only using like one input in two output out single spin transactions that means you know on an open transparent blockchain you're not going to be able to introduce any extra inputs or outputs to the transaction in order to try to you know muddy the waters of chain surveillance like you everything has to be a 100 percent deterministic spend like it's it's very easy to follow this so whenever it's been turned now to where you know it's it's again it's a morality issue it's it's something where you're either a good person because you're using bitcoin the way that it should be used that way we can look out for all the all the children of the world you know won't somebody think of the children as opposed to you, <laughs> it's it's always the won't somebody think of the children crowd i swear to god and it's always those people that won't you think of the children out in whatever out in africa they'll say that as a child like literally lies starving at their foot in front of them you know like it's every single time mm-hmm. but Bitcoin functions as well as it does because the incentives are aligned such that every person acting in their best interest is what is in the best interest of the network as a result. That's why it works like that as well as it does. That's why it's, you know, quote unquote, money for enemies, as is said so often, but people I don't really think get what that means. If you do what is in your best interest, that is in turn, also in the best interest of the network. That's how proper incentives align. If you do something that, you know, for like the greater good, as you might think, like that's, that's, you're essentially like trying to rely too heavily on, you know, altruistic tendencies or people that just want to do stuff for the better of the world. You can't, that's not tenable. That's not sustainable. You can't continue to do that. People have to see like tangible benefits you know, from something, there has to be a tangible benefit to them, to that person for like a a, a robust system like Bitcoin to sustain, in my opinion. So the whole morality thing being introduced and, you know, you're you're ruining Bitcoin for the future of the children and all this stuff. Like as soon as you start down that path, you have 100% lost me and I will not hear anything you have to say on the subject any longer. I'm just telling you that's not, that's not, he doesn't pay the bills. Yeah. It's not the way you're going to win me over. I promise it's not. Yeah. Morality doesn't pay the bills. It's like you're a minor, you're paying your energy bill. There's transactions coming through with fees on them. If you are logical you'd go thank you very much i'll have those and i think that's kind of the way that it eventually goes like anyone that i've spoken to who minds in a serious way just isn't taking this stuff seriously they're like it's fucking stupid and the incentives are aligned in that way that that works so i don't know i I kind of see this going away it's just you know it's it's everywhere and my, my concern is not that miners who are going to switch over and go oh yes please i'm going to earn less money like i don't see that happening 
No. But it's more like that it's changing the way that people talk about and what they believe to be acceptable. Like, exactly. I swear to God, like two years ago, if someone had said, hey, should we like filter stuff on Bitcoin? Like people would be like, shut the fuck up. Exactly. And, you know, you it's... You retard. Dude, uh, look at the reaction when this originally, uh, or I don't know who said originally, but years ago when, you know, when Luke in his custom fork, when he inserted the blacklist and didn't tell anybody, and it just like sneakily got inserted to this thing, there was an uproar. It, uh, they, oh, wah, 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 you know, and, and people, and there was, you know, he was censoring or, or put on the blacklist, like uh, it was like Satoshi Dice, like gambling sites, stuff like that, like mm. Satoshi Dice and stuff like that. And it was just, you know, so there's no, but would blacklist them uproar people weren't going for it i think that so a couple things number one i see this argument like everyone maybe it's just my feed i don't know but it's all over it's like it's so loud about running knots in particular all these node implementations are starting Mm -hmm. to put it into where you can run knots in the node and like start nine and umbral and uh, citadel all these things are like putting in you can run knots you can run knots you can run knots meanwhile there's one single implementation that is explicitly banning it but anyway (laughs) so (laughs) so uh i I would like to say a little sentence on that here in a second but here's my point so to me like like it's everywhere and whenever that t- a topic is so large like that and you like it's 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 almost like it's ubiquitous you can see it everywhere but you're not seeing like a, any actual action behind that it doesn't move people to do th- the thing and what i mean by that is if you look at like how many reachable knots nodes there are on something like like a bitnodes.io um, you know, you can go in and you can search for node tags and you can see like how many of these reachable nodes are there on the network. And there, there, don't get me wrong, there are certainly more knots nodes on the network now than there were before this thing started because nobody was running it hardly. So there are more, but there's still, it's like it's broke a little over 300 now. It's like it's still trailing well behind um, just Dojo, that, and like just ronin or samurai dojo it's still trailing well behind that and so the fact that like it feels so loud this whole argument is so loud and everybody's opinion on it is so everywhere but we're i'm not really seeing like the tangible result of that to me that is like an indication that it doesn't really have legs people really aren't into it Mm -hmm. but the problem is what you mentioned it shifts the conversation it shifts the the Overton window of censorship basically on Bitcoin and what is okay and what is not okay. And that shift is way more important than how many knots nodes are on the network. That's that's an irrelevant like you know metric in the in the scheme of things. But what we consider acceptable as far as you know restricting the things that people can do with their own money, that's a big, big thing. So I think you're hundred percent right. Like the social aspect of this is what is is important. And so, you know, it's really honestly, like I've had more, I guess, back and forth maybe about this than anything lately, because I don't really, I've already had the conversations about everything else, but this is important to make sure that people really understand what they're, what they're advocating for and what they're, what the, you know, the, the avenue, the door that they're opening. Like it's, this is a big problem if you can't see what this leads to inevitably down the road. So yeah. And just real quick on the, cause I see this everywhere and I know People have probably pointed it out, but I just, it's so, it just drives me crazy. If you, if you are a node operator, if you're running a node, right? And so when you send a Bitcoin transaction, it, it is broadcast from your node. Your node connects to a bunch of other nodes that are called peers who then broadcast it out into the net. Like this is how your transaction gets out, broadcast it from your node. If your node is connected to a bunch of peers that are running a node implementation, that explicitly refuses to relay some transactions that you do in your wallet. That is ridiculously dumb. <laughs> your transaction is not going to go anywhere. So of course you have to block those peers so that your transaction can be broadcast to the network. I, like the fact that we that right there still I see come up is like holy shit, bro. How do you not get this? <laughs> but they use that. <laughs> they use that. You know what I mean? As like a way to say, oh, well, see, now look, yeah, Samurai's, yeah, well. Samurai's yeah. doing censorship. See, everybody, oh, it's okay when you do it. That's not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's just, it's very, very aggravating because that's, that's part of the social thing to me is, you know, I hate the whole spook thing. You know what I mean? It's a spook because everybody's a spook. Everybody's a spook. 
But the reality is there are definitely like legitimate spooks and they sow this discord and it's easy for some people to, to grab on to, you know, to like grab a hold of because again, they're the type of people that don't really like to dig and get to the root of a thing. They just see something that they like and they go with it. And, you know, the people in like the general samurai wallet community are uh, just uh, fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of assholes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of assholes. Like the the asshole to like normie ratio is just off the freaking charts. But there's a good reason behind it. Don't get me wrong. But you know, a lot of it is just like if I can sow just a little bit of discord, then these guys are like they're gonna just run. They're gonna hate this whole crew. And so everything then that is talked about or discussed or anything that happens to that particular group of people is actually fine because fuck those people so you know if this i'm curious like it, it makes me wonder you know if somebody like a blue wallet or a, a whatever so whoever else whatever wallet you like was the one that was going to have their transaction not be broadcast because we we're mm-hmm. running this note i wonder how that changes the conversation i wonder how much of it was like, yeah, absolutely, let's go because fuck these dudes, fucking scammer eye anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it really probably I, a lot. I, yeah, I, I'm curious. I would say probably a lot, and 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 also like how many people are actually using pay names and how many people are actually doing this kind of stuff. Like, it's it's such a small percentage that yeah. people don't even probably know what the fuck it is. 100%. So they're like, yeah, it doesn't affect me, so whatever. And yeah, yes. like you say, like, fuck those guys. They were yes. mean. They called me a, they called me a retard <laughs> or yes. something like that. And it's like, because you are. You're right. Yeah, they did call you a, they did call you a retard. <laughs> so so I do think, yeah, it's it's easy to like, these people want to be in the in group and want to be liked and want to go up on stages and want to go on sailors yacht and all this type of stuff, you know, so they're, they're going to go against people who are mean to those people. So it's kind of easy to socially engineer them. Yeah. All of that in mind, are there any tools or things that you are using and recommending outside of like the things that we've discussed uh, outside of like fee estimators and the wallets that we've discussed. Is there anything that you're thinking about to protect yourself that you're, that you're willing to talk about? I know there's probably stuff you're not, but no, it's totally any fine. sort of advice. I tell you, it's kind of, um, kind of almost went in reverse a little bit, maybe in some ways. Um, something that I, I, I used to like really use and be into, and then I kind of got away from it a little bit. And now I'm really getting back into and really starting to, to use is uh, PGP on, on a lot of my stuff. You know, I, I got away from using PGP because, you know, you there are a lot of products out these days that, you know, offer encryption um end-to-end end encryption and things that you know they, they automatically decrypt all this stuff for you like there's they're making it very easy in a lot of these cases to be able to actually use encryption and i'm not saying the, that the encryption doesn't work the encryption probably is, is fine but you know using a, a third party as we are you know there's obviously it's the security hole but when you're using something and you're trusting them to encrypt it for you you know for the sake of some convenience it's it's you know it's a recipe for disaster and i i kind of got away from it from a little for a little bit but it feels like we're starting to get back into that time where shit's going to start getting a little wicked um you know you had the the thing with the tornado cash devs and then you had this thing with with roman sterling off and then you know you had this letter that samurai wallet came out and was like the head of the letter you know a lot of other companies signed on to it you know 1031 and all that but sent this uh, this this letter about these regulations off and you know like yeah it's it's a letter and a lot of other people sent letters and all that stuff but like how many of those other people are offering the type of services that samurai wallet like offers mm. you know what i mean like the, some of the people that signed on to that letter and I'm, I'm not knocking them don't get me wrong but some of the people that signed on to that letter like they're not a threat they're not doing anything subversive in the least you know it, there's a kyc exchange that collects all your information and sends it to this government you know again kudos to them for signing a letter and standing up and saying hey this is wrong but let's be real like you're you know they're, they don't give a shit about you but now samurai they're not in the firing line yeah now samurai wallet on the other hand like the, the whole and like goal of and the whole thing that the wallet does is give you you know transactional privacy it's the whole idea and so that's an easy target and now they hear they've had mine sign this letter 
phones, right? Uh, all these other people, they already hate them. So it's like, to me, it just feels like we're entering a time where I could very easily see it starting to get a little choppy. And when I start feeling that way, which is a, is bad, I should do it all the time. But especially when I start feeling this way, I really start getting back to PGP and all my shit that like e- even closely matters, quote unquote. So it's an old tech. It's a very old tech. You know what I mean? It's something that uh, yeah. a lot of people hate using, myself included, but it is doable. And I, I really, really, really highly advise people to use PGP, You know, especially if you've got like an Android device, you can use open keychain. It makes it really, really easy to do. And you can, you, know, it, you can really protect yourself a lot by using that. Because otherwise, especially with this FISA thing that they just did, like, I don't, I don't even know exactly what all, like down to the details. I'm only reading summations of other, what other people who have read the bill have, have uh, said. And from what I'm gathering, it's it's basically a rubber stamp for these, and these companies are going to be essentially forced to hand over information without having to seek a warrant on U.S. citizens. Um, and this is, you know, from like companies, from providers, so telecom communicators. So all these people, anything, any bit of your encryption uh, or uh, communication that's not encrypted, that's done off the top. And then even when you get into some of the services that maybe are encrypted, you know, some of these services are untested. I don't know how they're going to act, what they're going to do when they really like come for them. You know what I mean? Signal, I would say we, we do have a result on Signal. It's been some years now. And people talk shit about Signal all the time, but I'm I'm a big Signal fan. And we saw what happened in a court case with them. It's been years ago again. Signal's pretty good. Yeah. But but like PGP, completely agree with you. It's yeah. very smart to be using that. But on the other hand, it's fucking horrible to use. It's I've such used a open keychain. Yeah. I've used Cleopatra yeah. uh, for desktop and it's doable but every time I do it because you know I do it for like certain things where I'm like mm, this is sensitive oh right. you know this is a dick pic going across to Q&A like, <laughs> let's, let's make sure <laughs> right right you know I'll make sure that that's going over PGP but it's like every time I do it I go oh, how the fuck do I do this again yeah what am I what am I doing ah oh, what do what do I post here? What do I? And it's it's just like so unintuitive. Yeah, and it's such, such, it's a, such a ball. Like, yeah, it's exactly why it has. I just wonder: is there not a way? Well, is there not a way to? This? <sighs> it's one of those tools where, like, if you don't if you don't need the tool, then it is completely like in your way. What the fuck is this thing? But then when you need that tool, it's like there is no substitute. I have to have this tool. And so it's like, you know what I mean? And, but because there are, again, as you said, there's like, there's not a ton of times where you're going to be consistently saying all these or or doing all these things that have to be locally PGP encrypted and decrypted. Like it, generally speaking, you don't have to go through all that all the time, but like whenever you're keeping files, um, you know, maybe maybe some te- text documents and, and notes that you've taken from a meeting that you don't want to talk about. And like all these things that, you know, we just leave probably sitting on our desktop or in a text editor or whatever, just sitting in our files, like they're just sitting there. And, you know, so I, I've, I've really started getting back into making sure that everything that sits on my computers is is locally encrypted, that I make sure everything Everything is the way that it should be. And I am far from like a target or like the biggest target or anything like that. But this is, it's my freaking life that's on the line. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, yeah. I've got to protect myself in whatever way I can. But to be honest with you, like so much work that I've, I've just been working so much lately that I really, I don't have much time to, uh, to play with new things. And, and I kind of regret that a little. I mean, like I, I want to, I like, it, you know, play with new tools and stuff like that, but you know how it is. You get into working and you, mm-hmm. you're trying to do this thing and fix this thing. And then next thing you know, you know what I mean? And you're just kind of continue using the thing that you always used. So I rely on shows like this, to be honest with you, um, to like put me on to new and interesting things. That's one of the, the things that I do like about podcasts such as yours that actually talk about shit that that matters is that's why that's what I listen for. Like I, I, I like the guests. I like the interviews. I like the point of views. But then I also I really like getting put up on things that I didn't know about new techs, new apps, new protocols, whatever. So, you know, I kind of leave that one up to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's interesting you said PGP because that's kind of the the new path I'm going down, um, like personally, and a few people will be helping with this, uh, like 
learning how to properly use encryption. And I mean, we're doing some more shows and, and bits around how to do it because I was having this conversation the other day with someone. I was saying, okay, like you're going through all your labeling and that's very sensitive information, all your storage of all your information on your wallets. And then you want to do a backup because if you lose all of that, you're in a really bad place because that's happened to me before. And it yes. took me, oh, it's taken me literally weeks to try yeah. and like do my own chain surveillance to try and work out where the fuck I sent something and who to <laughs> and when and relabel. It's taken weeks and weeks. Yeah. So now I've got it and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do some backup. Cups, all right so i'm going to do like and have one on a separate laptop and then i have like a couple of extra usbs and then i'm like hang on what if someone got hold of these usbs all right what if they could then so then it's like well what do you do okay encryption so then i'm speaking to rabbit and i'm like what do i do to encrypt these and he's like well you can use a stick which you type in a code into i'm like is it open source he's like no it's not open source I'm like, oh, i don't really like the idea of that okay what else can i do uh, you can do this Veracrypt thing. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is Veracrypt? And he's like, <laughs> oh, I can probably teach it to you. And I'm like, can you teach it to me though? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> but you just like, we need some time and like, I'll go through it with you and just make some notes. And so that's the kind of thing I'd like to actually do a show on where I'm like, I don't think I'm alone in when someone like Rabbit says to me, oh yeah, just use Veracrypt. I'm like, okay, this is you yeah. now bring it to to my level and let's make sure that when I have my wallet labels that I've backed up that I really need if I need that backup that I can actually get into it and I haven't vericrypted myself out of the ability <laughs> to fucking view them a hundred percent a hundred percent yes uh that's again that's one of the big reasons I like still listen to podcasts like this, especially if I see it on a topic that I'm like oh what is that but yes there are so many people that do not understand, especially like local encryption, whether it's PGP or Veracrypt or Lux or whatever, like people really don't get it. And so, and it's totally understandable. It's not a, not a not, but yeah, I think that would be a, I think that would be an excellent episode. Just something on Lux and Veracrypt, like just general local encryption files and USBs and stuff like that. That's, that's a big win for people because it's again, one of those things where, you know, it's very easy to start. I don't know about anybody else, but me, it's very easy for me to like start off gung ho. You know what I mean? I start off and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. boom, everything's encrypted. Uh, 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 you'll never get me. You know what I mean? And then like, <laughs> and then like I had to access it four or five times and I'm like, oh, okay, well it's half encrypted. And then by the, by the end, it's just a USB laying on my you know coffee table and it's just like fuck me man why did I, I i got away from my security practices it's it's a human thing it's like something that we do it's why you know user experiences is, is important it's not the end all be all but it is important that people are actually able to use the freaking tool fairly easily so yeah i think that i think you you would really hit on something that a lot of people are interested in there with uh with that but otherwise, man, you know, it's just it's it's nose to the grindstone right now. Just uh, trying to get uh, trying to get a lot of work done. Is it uh, public knowledge what you're doing? Or I pro I mean, I don't think it's public public knowledge, but like I think people are probably pretty fairly intelligent enough to figure it out <laughs> to figure it out. Okay, uh, but uh, we'll leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Well, it's been really good having you on again. It's honestly been months since i've just had like a conversation on this podcast it's just been the monthly shows for for the reasons i talked to you about just not wanting to have a conversation with all the cunts out there but this has been refreshing and definitely uh definitely do it again soon and it's kind of given me a bit of a fire of like okay you need to cover some topics there are good people still here and yeah, Dude, it's been great. That's uh, you. You've hit on exactly how I feel. Like when I go, when I went to that conference in Dallas, for example, it's I, and I got to see some some of my people, and I got to hang out with some of my boys, and it's like coming out of there, I'm like, man, I'm I'm reinvigorated. And everybody, we all need that from time to time. Um, you know, whether that's being able to just talk to somebody, or you actually, or you see something that you just gets you back into it. Everybody strays. So especially in this stuff, it's so easily to get like discouraged and be down and feel overwhelmed and outmatched and outgunned. And it's just like, dude. And so it really, it, it means a lot that, um, you can find somebody and just have some good conversations and re reinvigorate some topics and get the old brain working again. 
That's what this is all about. That's why I'm going to these meetups. You know what I mean? Like it's a big part of why I'm doing all the things that I do. I don't want to allow myself to get so burnt and and just like jaded and black pilled on this whole privacy thing that I just throw my hands up because I've seen it happen a lot of times. Yeah, a hundred percent. We won't give in. We won't give up. That's right. I had some burnout, but I'm getting back to it now. So that's right. Yeah, mate. Thanks for coming on, and we'll do it again soon. Yeah. Thanks for all you do in the space and. For anyone who hasn't already read the article yet that you've posted on Ungovernable Misfits, I'll put a link in the show notes. And uh, yeah, yeah cool. hopefully yeah. we do this again soon. Yeah, for sure, man. Anytime. Love it. All right, mate. Take care. All right, you too. Thanks for listening. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy it, consider sharing it with friends and family. And if you haven't checked out ungovernablemisfits.com, go and do it now. Mr. Crown puts a lot of work into this. It's fucking beautiful. Ungovernablemisfits.com